Here's another example of constraint motion. We have an incline and we have two blocks which go over a string over a massless pulley and a small pulley. There are two questions. First question is what's the value of this mass m such that the system remains in equilibrium meaning this system should not get any acceleration and in the second question what if m equals 10 kilogram what is the acceleration of the blocks. So let's tackle this one by one. Let's start with the first one. So let's do A first. Let's try to figure out what the value of M should be such that the system is in equilibrium. Equilibrium means acceleration of block of this mass, I'll call it as acceleration of M. That should be equal to acceleration of this mass. That should be equal to zero. That's the meaning of equilibrium. All right, let's write down the forces that we know are gonna act on this. Let's start with this guy. I'm gonna redraw it over here. If here is M, then there are two forces acting on him. There is a gravitational force acting downwards and that gravitational force is just M into G where G is 10, so that's 10 times M. And there's a tension force acting upwards, which I don't know, it's called as T. And there are no other forces, remember acceleration is zero. Therefore, if I apply Newton's second law, then T minus 10 M must be zero or T equals 10 M. That's equation number one. Then I can do the same thing for this guy. Now this guy, you have to be a little bit careful because he's on an incline. So here's the incline and here's the mass, 10 kilograms. So we have to be a little bit careful about the forces. We know that there's a gravitational force acting downwards, which is going to be 10 times 10, which is 100 Newton. We have a normal force, which is gonna act this way. And we also have tension force, which is gonna act this way. This is tension. Now, <clears throat> The three forces should just cancel out. So we can resolve them in any two axes we want. We have done this before. I'm going to take this as one axis, call it Y, and this as the other axis. I'm going to call that as X. And the reason for that is now I can, I only have to do is resolve. I have to resolve gravitational force. Since this angle is alpha over here, this angle, this angle also becomes alpha, which is uh, 30 degrees. Therefore, the component of mg along this direction is mg cos alpha, that's 100 into cos 30, that is 100 root 3 by 2, that's 50 root 3. And the component along this direction is 100 sin alpha, that's 100 into sin 30, that's just 50. Now, if we build equation for this, we can build equation along the y direction and along the x direction, but I don't care about the y direction. Normal force is going to be equal to 50 root 3. That's that's not useful for us. But yeah, we, we got the normal force. But now we can use this and we can say tension must be equal to 50. Okay? So tension minus 50 is 0, so tension should be equal to 50. So tension must be equal to 50. That's equation number 2. So from these two equations, we can say 50 equals 10 times m. So the mass needed so that this thing remains in equilibrium is 5 kilograms. <clears throat> Here it is. So it's amazing that a 5 kilogram object over here can be in equilibrium with a 10 kilogram object over here and it's all because of the incline. All right. We'll solve the second part of this problem in another page. So <clears throat> we have to calculate, if both are 10, we have to calculate the acceleration of the system. So let me quickly draw that on the other page. All right, here we have it. This is part number, part B, and we need to calculate the acceleration of this system. Now, if you look back, we found out that if the mass is five kilograms, then the system is in equilibrium. So clearly if the mass is less than 5 kilograms, 
this guy will win and accelerate down. It makes sense, right? You need at least five kilo. You need exactly five kilograms for this to be in equilibrium. So if it's less than five, then you know this 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 one will win. It'll go down. But obviously, if it's more than five, it's gonna go. Therefore, we know that in this case, this guy should accelerate down and this fellow should accelerate up. But remember, we're gonna solve this problem as if we are solving it for the first time without any prior knowledge. So we have no clue about the accelerations and we don't want to think about them. So we're gonna, we're gonna assign accelerations randomly. So we're gonna say, okay, this guy gets an acceleration, say this way. Um, let's consider it to be this way. And let's gonna call this acceleration G. What do I call this? I'm gonna call this as A1. That's the acceleration of the first block. I'm gonna call this as block number one. This is block number two. And I'm gonna assume that this acceleration is downwards. Okay. All right, so let's rebuild our equations. So we're doing part B. We'll start with this guy. Oh, we'll start with this guy. So let's redraw for this fellow. How many forces do we know are acting on him? Well, there's one force acting downwards. That's 10 times 10, that's 100. There's another force acting upwards. That's a tension force. And notice now tension force will be different. Tension force would have changed. We calculate tension force last time, that is 50, but that need not be the case over here. The things are accelerating, so clearly tension may change. Let's see what the new value of tension is going to be. Anyways, the system is accelerating downwards, A2, and therefore I can now say, um, using Newton's second law, I take downwards positive, 100 minus T, must be equal to 10, that's the mass of this guy, that's, this is 10 kg, t times, 10 times a2. That's equation number one. Similarly, I'm gonna build equation for this guy over here, this fellow. So I'm gonna draw somewhere over here. Let me draw it here. So here is block number two, block number one, sorry, and let's put forces on them, we have 100 newtons downwards, we have tension acting upwards, this way, we also have a normal force acting this way, and we have, what else, and that's it, these are the only forces, and that's gonna cause an acceleration in this direction, we're gonna resolve this in the two axes, x and y, I always like to resolve along along a direction in which there is acceleration. Therefore, immediately we have the two components of this force. Just like before, since this angle is alpha and 30 degrees, this angle becomes alpha and 30 degrees. So that's 100 cos 30, that's 50 root 3. And this is gonna be also 50 sine 30, that's just 50. Sorry, 100 sine 30, which is 50. Okay, so we can build equation for this guy. And the equation for this guy would look like along the x direction, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take this direction is positive, so 50 minus t, 50 minus t must be equal to mass, that is 10, times acceleration a1. That's equation number two for us. Now, again, the, we, have, we have two equations, but we have three unknowns, so constraint comes into picture, and the constraint is, again, the length of the string must be the same. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it again, but I'm pretty sure you can as you understand that over here, it's a pretty simple case. A1 must be equal to minus A2. That's equation number three. That's the constraint motion for us. So using this, we can now solve this. I'm gonna substitute A1 equals minus A2 over here. So I'm gonna write this equation. I'm gonna rewrite, let me rewrite in blue. So 100 minus T equals 10 A2. Then I'm gonna write this equation and substitute over here, I get 50 minus t equals minus 10 a1 is minus 10 a2. Which means I can add them and if I, sorry, I can subtract them. So if I subtract, this cancels, you have a 50 equals 20 a2. So a2 is uh, 2.5. 2.5 meters per second squared. Notice that A2 is positive, which makes perfect sense. We predicted that. So A1 becomes negative. It's minus of A2. So that's minus 
meters per second square which also makes sense because we <coughs> predicted it has to go up and we can now calculate what the tension is <coughs> where do we apply that let's use this formula over over here so 50 minus tension must be equal to 10 into a1 a1 is minus so minus 25 so tension now is a 75 newtons so this is the new value of the tension the tension in the string has now increased Ta-da! Okay, I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about constrained motions. I will see you on my next episode. Stay tuned!